Chair, thanks the gentleman. The gentleman kneels back to the gentleman from Texas, Rick. Thank my friend from Texas. Um, Mr. Duncan, a couple quick questions. My understanding is that based on the existing natural gas plays that we know that are existence, um, we could increase gas production by about 50% um, and LNG exports fourfold over the next decade. Does that sound right to you? I, think, to free it I up? think it's a little low, but yes. Yeah, could be low, right? I think those are conservative estimates as I understood them. Um, there are 17 LNG projects awaiting export permits from the DOE. Does that sound right to you? That's the that information I have in front of you. Um, natural gas production um, is uh, currently at its peak under Biden. Um, so it's not a good, a good uh, uh, you know, time to try to ratchet back on it, right? That's important for our current environmental, I mean, economic uh, strength, right, as for Americans. But here's the part that I really want to get at. Um, is this uh, going to help or hurt our economy? Hurt our economy. Is this going to, meaning this being the, the Biden play, not the bill, right? So the, the Biden play, this bill is meant to undo. This bill will undo it and help Correct. the economy if we're talking about the bill. And would, would the Biden regulations restricting LNG exports help or hurt Ukraine? Uh, this would hurt Ukraine. Right. Uh, is our position over the last number of years restricting um, and not and not opening up uh, LNG production exports? Could that have, in in many ways, certainly pre-invasion two years ago, hastened and encouraged the invasion because we 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 left our European allies, including Ukraine and everybody in Europe, more dependent on Russian gas? The gentleman's correct. Eastern Europe, including Ukraine. We're heavily reliant upon Vladimir Putin's oligarch for their energy resources. Um, we could change that forever by exporting more U.S. produced resources. Uh, does a moratorium on, on LNG exports help or hurt Russia? If this stays in effect and the United States cannot export the natural gas that Eastern Europe needs, they're going to look to Russia and it will help pad the pocket, and fund the war of Vladimir Putin. Uh, with respect to some of the stuff you talked about, about the rest of the world, right, some, something in the zip code of half the world does not have reliable power, right? Something in the zip code. Certainly a third, you know, three billion-ish or so people do not have access to reliable power. Does that sound right to you? That sounds about right. Um, and so for the, for the sake of the world and exports, right, exporting liquefied natural gas, encouraging the production and the building out of gas-fired plants, certainly improves the condition of people throughout the world and allows them to adapt to climate, frankly, better, right? Our climate-related deaths are actually at historic lows, right, because we're able to manage and adapt to the climate based on abundant, reliable energy. Is that fair? That's fair to say. And by restricting the availability of reliable energy, we're making people more subject to climate uh, problems, right? Because they're not able to have the energy necessary to deal with any issues that are thrown at them climate-wise. So the hurricane that wiped out Galveston in, you know, whatever, 19, whatever that was, uh, yeah, 1900, um, right? We now have the ability to deal with those issues in greater strength, get power back up and running. I mean, Governor DeSantis had power up and running within 72 hours in most places in 90% of the areas in Florida um, because we have uh, a stronger, more resilient, more reliable grid. Is that, is that fair? That's fair to say, and I would just add that you're keeping people in energy poverty around the globe without allowing them, not just the, from the climatic events, but energy poverty, not being able to have the standard of living that they desire. And, and was this... Uh, state of affairs made worse last year with the passage of the so-called Inflation Reduction Act and the numerous subsidies in it that went predominantly 90% of which to billion dollar type corporations and much of which goes to China, much of those subsidies. Uh, uh, would you agree with that as a general matter? I agree with that. Um, and in fact, was not the main purpose in many ways of, of the Inflation Reduction Act to try to drive, frankly, frankly, American natural gas out of power. This administration has targeted American fossil fuel production from day one. President Biden said it on the campaign trail, and he's lived true to his campaign promises. 
Well, a question for the, the, the ranking member, if you will. The, you had a reference the extent to which the um, uh, uh, White House, uh, you know, what it was doing. And the White House put out a what they are saying on its decision, and they highlighted a bunch of statements. And one of the things you commented on was that we're not, we're not ending LNG, right? And uh, the White House put out and advertised it and tried to trumpet their decision, what they are saying, a number of statements from Al Gore, uh, who said world leaders agreed on a transition away from fossil fuels. Uh, the president's taking that pledge seriously. Uh, the president and CEO of Natural Resources Defense Council, let's be clear about the public interest, it's time to phase out fossil fuels. Putting all those aside, Sierra Club actually put out a statement literally that said, huge news, POTUS and Secretary Granholm have taken a bold and historic action to stop LNG. So the White House trumpeted that as a message, as a marketing tool for the success of their plan. And so how is that consistent with the idea that we're not actually trying to attack and end LNG, i.e. American natural gas, that is going around the world and get, lifting people out of poverty, making our uh, industry stronger, making Russia weaker, making Ukraine stronger, all of those things that we get from exporting LNG, these groups say stop LNG. How is that consistent with the idea that we're not working to stop LNG? Well, I haven't commented at all about the climate aspect of this because, frankly, I was trying to, I wasn't sure that you on the other side of the aisle were that concerned about that. I thought we were mainly concerned about price and, you know, what we were going to do here. I mean, the, the problem, in my opinion, is that the administration's main focus here when we talk about the public interest, in my opinion, is to make sure that price does not go up for the American people. We know that uh, there are occasions in the past where the price has increased dramatically, uh, that, uh, you know, because of, um, you know, when, when uh, it's not available here and it's being exported abroad, we know the same thing is true about crude oil. The price went up uh, significantly. Plus, uh, in terms of all these other countries that you are so concerned about, um, the reality is that the main uh, countries that are used that use uh, natural gas are the European countries, and the very Commission, EU Commission, said that this is not going to affect anything because there's going to be plenty of LNG available. In fact, it might be three times as much, even with the existing production and shipping overseas. So, you know, I'm trying to focus on the fact that our allies aren't going to be hurt. Uh, our adversaries like China are the ones that, that are mainly dependent on uh, and more and more dependent on uh, LNG from the United States. I don't really care about China. As far as I'm concerned, you can, you can suffocate their energy supply. Uh, I'm mainly concerned about the U.S. and the fact that if you if we don't have this public interest analysis that you want to get rid of, then these applications are going to be reviewed without knowing what the price is going to be for American consumers. Uh, we could talk about the environment if you want to, but uh, the, the, this public interest analysis is, I think, primarily focused on not having the price go up for Americans. That's my concern. Uh, Mr. Duncan, how does that compare to the point that we are making before that there was upwards of 50% um, availability of gas production if we were to unleash American natural gas and not constrain it. In other words, do we believe the market is actually constrained or restricted, uh, as, as was just you know, alluded to or suggested, in terms of what that would mean for price? Or do we have the ability to robustly produce American natural gas, both for the benefit of the American people if unleashed, as well as for exports, uh, in order to facilitate and help allies and, and uh, you know, drive production of gas facilities around the world? Well, it comes down to supply and demand, and we have a tremendous amount of supply here in the United States. Um, we hear comments about price increases, but we led the world uh, in energy production. We lifted the export ban on crude oil. We saw energy prices actually go down in this country post-2019. When energy prices started going up was when the Biden administration started restricting production, restricting future lease sales. This isn't a overnight phenomenon. Mm. You have to have planning. You have to have investment. You have to have development. You have to have production. You have to have production tied into pipelines. Those pipelines to deliver those resources, whether it's liquid oil to refineries or natural gas to LNG exports or to the utilities to utilize those, 
You have to produce, you have to deliver, you have to utilize, and then we can export. We have an abundance to export. And it will not affect prices by continuing the export. Democrats had said, we're not banning the existing uh, export terminals that are out there. We're just wanting to ban future or pause future investment in that. Well, if we, and this is an indefinite pause, let's assume that, that this administration remains in power for another four years. That's delaying another four years of planning and investment and development and production and delivery. And so this was misguided press release by this administration, but it was intentional because the intention of this administration since before they moved into power was to stop and kill the U.S. fossil fuel industry, period. Uh, is the gentleman aware that uh, the increased use of solar farms and large use of that has created a number of stalled projects in this country based on environmental impact and working through the environmental impact statements of said solar farms, uh, as well as the fact that the windmill uh, farms and the products that are produced them, the amount of energy that goes into the production of the, of the actual windmills themselves, and then the actual uh, destruction of those that they're very difficult to uh, uh, you know, recycle or, or to deal with. And in fact, we bury these large windmills uh, blades and so forth in many uh, places and circumstances. Is the gentleman aware of those implications that we have for a, a massive shift in that direction away from, say, clean burning natural gas in terms of the impact on the environment? We haven't even begun to fathom the environmental impact of uh, some of these renewables, whether it's the batteries that go in EVs, into life of windmills, into life of solar panels, into life of EVs, uh, and what that might do to the environment. Last, last two questions. One is that uh, the gentleman, I assume, is aware that coal has something like 1,100 coal-fired plants uh, that they operate and they're producing two a week. It accounts for about 30 percent of global emissions in terms of what they're producing. Uh, so to the extent that we can have liquefied natural gas being exported, to the extent that we can encourage China to use liquefied natural gas or nuclear, which they're building some of, uh, that, that certainly um, would have a net positive impact on emissions, correct, if, 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 if one is concerned about CO2. And then, and the final point is, is that, does this sound right to you? Um, I read a study uh, in which EQT, EQT Corporation CEO Toby Rice pointed out that replacing coal power overseas around the world, so all of the coal-fired plants that are currently in operation in China, India, and other places around the world, that if we were to replace those with American LNG, uh, putting aside nuclear and other uh, uh, options, would have the environmental impact of electrifying every vehicle in the United States, putting solar on every household in America and adding 54,000 industrial scale windmills, doubling the United States wind capacity combined. That's if we were to replace coal-fired plants around the world with liquefied natural gas exports. Now, obviously, we can't do that in one single fell swoop. Uh, obviously, there's going to be other countries that are going to explore different options. But does the, is the point, does the point remain that the production of American gas, is that a net benefit for overall uh, environment, environmental benefit as well as economic benefit for the American people. Is it, would the gentleman agree? The gentleman's correct. So therefore, uh, I would uh, uh, thank the gentleman for being here and for his support of this bill, and I yield back.